Good readings, fellow philosophers. In this brief video, we want to talk about this reading. Um, this week's reading, Mary Wollstonecraft's A Vindication of the Rights of Women. And um, this is the only woman, woman writer that we will see, woman author that we will read in the first part of this course. Uh, we will read several uh, female authors in the second part of the course, but uh, the first part of the major uh, educational theorist, this is the only one that we'll be reading. Mary Wollstonecraft wrote on a variety of topics. She wrote on politics, uh, women's role in education and in society, and in education itself. She is more closely aligned with John Locke. And as you will see in the reading, she has some pretty stinging things to say about uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. It's important to understand the context in which she wrote. She wrote in the 1700s. And um, at that time, there was a lot of discussion about what are the rights of men. In fact, a very famous book called The Vindication of the Rights of Men was written right around the time that uh, Mary Wollstonecraft wrote her piece. Um, and in this time, women, as men were beginning to be have the rights articulated and defined, uh, women were seen as second-class citizens who had to rely on their husbands or fathers for pretty much. Um, at that time, they, people were very straightforward about the role of women. Um, uh, Sir William Blackstone wrote, the legal is existence of a woman is suspended during marriage, or at least incorporated and consolidated in the will of the husband. So part of what is known as the first, first wave feminism, people will identify three waves of feminism. This um, is the first wave. The second wave would be around the time of the women's suffrage movements in the first part of the 19th. 1900s, 20th century, and then the third wave feminism is uh, the w feminism of the late the late 1900s. Yeah. So this first in this first uh, wave, um, the idea was beginning to be developed about um, about women's subjugation in society, and Wollstonecraft, among others, were beginning to uh, to rail against that. Uh, she wrote several pieces along these lines. Uh, one was thoughts about the on the education of daughters, and um, the, uh, the thrust of the book was that women, just like men, should have their reason uh, developed, and they should cultivate reason, and um, not let their passions run wild, but they should um, cultivate reason. And 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 we've seen this now in um, in, the, in our writings, the the positing of reason versus passion, passion versus reason. We'll see some people later on who will put these two together, but uh, Wollstonecraft, among others, came down, slightly down on the side of, of reason as being that which should uh, should guide the individual, again, in opposition to, to Rousseau. Uh, in Vindication of the Rights of Women, the section that we will read is from this book. Uh, she noted that women were ill-prepared for their duties as social beings. And uh, there was a, uh, a web of what she calls false expectations that would make them miserable. So to address these, she um, uh, she wrote this piece. And the piece that we will read this week, you'll see how that was developed. Um, she wrote not just on uh, on topics related to women and gender, but she also wrote about education uh, in and of itself. Um, she developed. Uh, um, a popular idea at the time called association of ideas. And in this, um, she noted that we almost reflexively associate one idea with another. So prior learning is, um, is, is helpful in one sense, but also can be a chain that b binds the individual in another so that we need to be able to understand our previous ways of thinking and have them challenged so that we can be open to, to so this was um, a significant development in um, in her thinking especially in dealing with women who had all kinds of ideas about uh, but who they should be and what they should be doing in society so the breaking free from these common perceptions of women's roles was a huge part of women being able then to be open to, to not only new ideas but new ways of thinking and new ways of living so um, t t today we you know, we live in that legacy 
of Mary Wollstonecraft. We talk about identity politics today and don't even think anything of it. This would have been a rather novel idea back when, when she wrote, but the idea that, that politics and that groups kind of be experiencing life different and those should be explored if those individuals are, are to be, um, are to find uh, full expression of their life and full. So with that, we will read Vindication of the Rights of Women. Check back later in the week. We'll have some summary thoughts.